on episode 341 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Todd Sennett and discuss his book, The Back Pain Relief Diet. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 341. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness. The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Our guest today is a pain expert and chiropractor, and he really practices a really cool, holistic approach to back pain. I know you're going to enjoy this conversation. With no further ado, here's Dr. Todd Sennett. So, Dr. Sennett, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Uh, well, thank you so very much for having us. You know, the book, The Back Pain Relief Diet, I think this might be one of the more important books that are out there. Uh, because quite frankly, just about everybody at some point in their lives, particularly as we get over 40, uh, is going to be dealing with some form of back pain. I fit that number two only because I injured myself. So my issue was more of an acute, you know, Alan did something stupid thing. Uh, <laughs> but, but there's a lot of people that are just suffering from back pain and they really can't find answers uh, to, to what's going on in their lives. And so yeah. they, they keep doing what they're doing and the doctor's like, well, I'm doing these MRIs or I'm doing this. Let's, let's try that. You know, then they, then they start getting into the pain relievers and the, you know, the warming things and just trying to get past this moment of pain because pain is one of those, you just can't ignore it. It's there. Yeah. And, but you're approaching this from a very different perspective in that we might be doing something that isn't even related to our backs, but more uh, related to our stomachs that yeah. can actually be causing the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, pretty amazing. So, you know, just to give your listeners a, a little bit of background on back pain or stats on back pain is 85% of the world is going to suffer from back pain. It's the leading cause of job disability. It's the second leading cause of missed work days. And it's a healthcare epidemic. And uh, the reason is, is that when I look at these statistics, it's not that back pain is inevitable. It's just that our paradigm is so wrong. Like essentially the doctors we're missing it, right? We're completely screwing it up. And that's the conclusion that I've reached. And I have a very uh, pivotal story, which happened to my father. Uh, he was a chiropractor and he uh, actually bent down to pick up a tennis ball one day and his back went out. And for nine months, he was flat on his back as a chiropractor. He earned his living helping people with their back pain. And he was completely bedridden for nine months with back pain. And no one can help him. He went to chiropractors, physical therapists, orthopedists, they want to do exploratory sur <coughs> excuse me <coughs> they want to do uh, exploratory surgery on him and he couldn't he could barely get out of bed he could barely walk he certainly couldn't work and he wound up seeing this doctor who examined him very differently and asked the question well why are you having these back spasms and he he told my father that other than your back spasms you seem very healthy you didn't have an injury back pain doesn't come from nowhere so we have to figure out where it's coming from and um, the doctor surmised that my father, back then, as long as you were thin, you could eat whatever you wanted. So my father's diet was filled with sugar and caffeine. The doctor surmised that his diet was upsetting his digestive system. And then subsequently, his digestive system was affecting his muscular system. So his back pain was coming from his diet uh, and his digestive system. And that's not something that he ever learned in school or ever heard of. But between the choice of having exploratory back surgery or changing your diet, it's not a very difficult decision to make. So he changed his diet. Within two weeks, he was 100% cured. And uh, this was way back in 1974, mind you. And uh, it put us on a crusade to change the approach in di both diagnosing and treating back pain. And I'm very excited to be able to share this book called The uh, Back Pain Relief Diet Book to tell people that their back pain could be caused by their diet and subsequently could be solved by their diet. So yeah. it's very, very exciting. It's always interesting to me. It's someone will sit there and say, okay, I can take this little bitty pill. That's, that's going to, you know, effectively cover my problem. And they don't imagine all the food and locates and, and things that they're taking into their mouth throughout the day and completely discounting that that could have any effect on our health and well-being. But yeah. recognizing that that pill is going to do something substantial to our bodies 
Uh, yeah, in- I mean, when I tell when I tell patients their back pain is coming from their diet, a lot of times, you know, they, it's very disbelieving because it's not something that you, anyone's really ever told you. And quite frankly, most doctors don't even look for it or even know about it. But I say, if have you heard of if you have back pain, people give you an anti-inflammatory, and they'll be like, yes. And they're like, well, what happens if we gave you a diet that was anti-inflammatory? Couldn't that work the same? And the answer is yes, of course it can work the same. And, and cost a lot less. <laughs> exactly. And a lot less side effects. <laughs> yes. So in the book, you have the, the 10 basic principles of back diet connection. Um, yep. I thought this was really, really cool because it kind of put me on this term of saying, well, you know, a lot of people say, well, I eat healthy. Yeah. You know, I eat really good foods and, you know, I'm, I'm salads and, you know, the grass fed meats and the, the kale and the, you know, I eat really well and they're still suffering. And so you kind of go through these principles that kind of explains why that's so. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through the principles. If that's right with you. Yeah. So, um, number one, I said, regardless of your diet, your diet can be the cause of your back pain. So whether you're having coffee, uh, a donut, soda, pasta, pizza, cake, or even if you're having a green drink, smoothie, kale salad, and quinoa, regardless of your diet, uh, you can create a back pain. So anything that can upset your digestive system can upset your muscular system. So we have to essentially figure out what's the diet that's right for you because we need to cut down on the inflammation from your gut. The next thing I would say is regardless of the severity of your back pain. So whether you're having severe back pain and can, can't get out of bed, or whether you're dealing with a nagging back pain where you're just kind of living around it or have to lift carefully or bend carefully, regardless of the symptoms, the diet could be the cause of your back pain. Um, the third thing, which is, I think is vital, is before undergoing any invasive procedure, rule out diet first is the cause. So you always want, as a doctor, we always tell, and a patient, you always want to do the least invasive thing first and then go more and more invasive. So unfortunately, I see a lot of patients in my office who have who've had surgeries or injections and stuff that actually hasn't helped before they ruled out something that's so simple as to change your diet. So the good thing is, is that uh, another principle is you're going to know your answer within a month and very likely you know it within two weeks. So we change your diet within two to three weeks, you're going to know your answer of whether your back pain is caused by your diet or not. Another factor is, or principle is, uh, causes of back pain most likely isn't just one cause, it's multi-factor. So it can be some structural imbalance. It can be some postural imbalance. It could be a worked out too heavy, but it can also be your emotions and your stress and your diet. So a lot of times it's multifactored. Another principle is just because a food is deemed healthy, it may not be healthy for you. So for some, let's say kale could be this undigestible uh, type of food that gives someone a lot of gas and bloating, whereas someone maybe feel better if they would have a turkey sandwich on whole grain bread as opposed to a big bulky salad. So we need to not necessarily look at foods as what's deemed healthy and what's not healthy. You have to deem it on what's healthy for you, which gets us to our next principle is the quality of your bowel movement evaluates the quality of your digestive system and the health of your back can very much be evaluated based off the quality of your bowel movement. So in the book, we have a picture of what's known as the Bristol stool chart and we'll show you how your bowel movements are because that's an indication of how your body is ridding itself of its waste. So a lot of times, if your body is not ridding itself of its waste properly, your body is building up toxicity with bloating and gas in the digestive system that will affect the muscular system. Number eight on the principles is you want to cut down on the crap, but too much of a good thing isn't a good thing. So you want to have balance in your life. Eating, again, too many large salads, having too many green drinks can be just as bad as having too much soda or caffeine. So everything in uh, variation and variety. Again, principle number nine is anything that can cause digestive upset can create your back pain. And then uh, the last thing, which is a very important principle, is, is variety is vital. You must mix it up. You have to have three different types of breakfast, three different types of lunches, and three different types of dinners. Every food comes with a different nu- nutrient makeup, digestive process, digestive time. And if you keep eating the same foods over and over again, you can really upset the digestive process. Yeah. And those are my 10 general principles when it comes to the, you know, back pain relief diet. And I think a lot of what you're kind of getting into with this is, and I agree with you on the front end of this, your your father had the option, okay, we could go for exploratory surgery, which actually just 
uh, kind of just scares the crap out of me. It's like, you can't take a picture or an x-ray or MRI or something. Uh, you've got to cut me open and try to figure it out. So I do understand why he was willing to, to try something that even if it didn't work, it, it, it only cost him, you know, another three or four weeks. But you, like you said, he was, he was back on his feet within, uh, within two weeks. Uh, what we're doing here though, is, is we're actually trying to figure out what kind of foods our body needs versus the kind of foods that causes problems. Exactly. And so what you have in the book is kind of a nutrition test where we could do a diagnostic. Yes. So there's actually two tests. The first test is the digestive inflammation test. And that will tell uh, a reader or a patient whether we think that your back pain could be diet related, right? So I don't want to just sit there and tell everyone to start changing all their diets because what they may be doing may be right. And their back pain cause could come from stress or a structural issue. So the first thing is the digestive inflammation test. That's going to ask about if you're constipated, if you're having diarrhea, change of medication, stomach viruses, bloating, gassy, repeat meals, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So based off your scoring, we're going to know if we think that your back pain is coming from your digestive system and your diet or not. And then once we do that, and let's say we found as if that we think that your back pain is coming from your diet, then there's a diagnostic nutrition test that can point you in the right direction of essentially four different types of diets that we think are going to be right for you. Because again, no diet is right for everybody. So there's um, a diet for someone who's having the pizza, the pasta, the wine, the cookies, the cakes, and the coffees. So what we want to do is we want to cut down on their inflammation. There's a, another diet where someone's having too many healthy foods. So it's called the digestive rest, where we're cutting down on the raw vegetables, where we're cutting down on the roughage and we're going to more cooked vegetables and, and foods that don't create so much upset. And there's also a diet called the FODMOPS diet. And that's someone who's having some specific irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome or symptoms that they need specific diets and specific foods that kind of come down the digestive system. If you calm down the digestive system, you calm down the back pain. Okay. Now I want to kind of go through those because I I think anyone can kind of relate and say, okay, yes, if I'm, if I'm eating crap food, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. the pizzas and the beer and the, uh, everything else, then, and I'm, and I'm hurting, then there's the potential that that's a cause. And I, and I can even say this myself is uh, because I do think I call seasonal ketosis. And so for part of the year, uh, I eat really, really clean. I, I eat in ketosis and I, I tend to be very pain-free. And then I'll go through my season. It, it tends to be football season when we're tailgating and hanging out. I yeah. want to have a few beers. You know, if someone brings a dish, um, I'm going to eat it. You know, thank you, Carol. Please bring the deviled eggs. I love those. Right. But there'll be other foods there that, that aren't the deviled eggs and aren't nearly as healthy for me. And I'll notice like little things like tendonitis, and my elbow will start to kind of flare up and, you know, just those kind of things. And, and you know, maybe some headaches and just like you said, my bowel movements aren't quite as uh, comfortable or as, or as regular as they would be otherwise. So I think people, most people understand that if I'm eating garbage, then that's a pretty simple fix. Uh, but I, I think it really can confuse people when they're saying, well, I'm eating everything that I've always been told was healthy. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, that's the interesting thing. You know, I think the real question is really what's healthy for you. So I have really great patient stories in the book where a patient of mine decided to go gluten-free and, you know, went gluten-free and wasn't having any breads, um, was having a lot of green drinks and smoothies and salads and lean fishes, lean fish. And she was as gassy as bloated can be. And when you're gassy and bloated, that's going to create a lot of back pain. So for her, We had to dial it back a little bit and we said, no more raw vegetables. Let's cook your vegetables. Have a turkey sandwich instead of that large salad. Let's have some eggs or let's have some whole grain bread with some whole peanut butter and jam as opposed to a green drink in the morning. And that was the missing link for her. That was the answer for her. So again, you want to listen to your body because there's a lot of foods that are deemed very healthy that can create a lot of gas and bloating. So you want to have the variety, you want to listen to your body, and uh, the diagnostic nutrition test is going to point you in the right direction of what diet we think is right for you. Okay. Let's take a minute and talk about the FODMAP diet and why that would be beneficial for some people. Yeah. So the FODMAPS diet is really ideal for someone who has something called irritable bowel syndrome. And it's essentially that particular person or that particular diet is targeted for someone who's having trouble 
digesting specific carbohydrates. So it's uh, FODMAP starts for fermentable oligo, dye, and monosaccharides, and poly, poly oils. And it's for people who are sensitive. What the diet does is it pulls the dairy, it pulls some of the fructose or fruits such as apples and pears. It eliminates wheat and garlic. It re- eliminates beans and lentils and a lot of sugar alcohol such as honey, agave, corn syrup, and alcohol. And it's a very unique diet because it targets a specific person for someone who does eat healthy, but again, is suffering from the irritable bowel. And when you find that rat patient, it could be absolutely life-changing of, of eliminating those foods. Okay. So I basically, I go through and I take the two, uh, the two diagnostic tests. Mm-hmm. And so I realize, yes, it might be my diet that's called at least a factor in this. It might not be the only factor, but uh, I've got enough of the, a positive read on this diagnostic to know, okay, changing my diet might, might be a, a good answer for me. Yep. And then I go do the other diagnostic test. It's going to say, okay, these are the, this is the eating plan that's, that's most recommended for me to deal with this issue. What can I expect over the course of the next two to four weeks? So we want to see some changes, and ideally, we want to actually see some positive changes. So we want to see your body feel less gassy and bloated. And then what's the goal? The goal is to get rid of your back pain, so or your neck pain, or your shoulder pain, or your muscle aches. So the goal is for you to feel better in your back. This is a back pain relief diet, and I truly believe that if you follow these diets and it resonates with you, your back pain is going to be much better. Yeah, and so these are not really so much elimination diets as they are just... um just trying to find an eating way that's going to give your body the nutrition it needs, like you said, having the variety, and then also just making sure that we're not doing anything to inflame our gut or to upset our bowel so that we basically are as clean as we can be for what our body needs. Uh, You said it perfectly. (laughs) Good, good. Okay. And the other thing that's in the book that I think was really cool is you, you actually put some meal plans in here. Yep. So you didn't just tell me, okay, go eat paleo and I'll go figure it out somewhere else. You gave me a, a one week or two week. I forget. There's some of them that had two weeks and some yeah, of them. Yeah. Really um, you know, the great thing was I have um, the nutritious in my office are able to put together all the menus and all the meals, menus, and suggestions. So each diet has somewhere between 10 days and two weeks worth of food. And if you're somebody who just wants to follow a regimented menu and recipe, we have that. If you're somebody who wants to be a little less regimented and you want to just follow lists of do's and don'ts, we yeah. have that as well. And uh, the nutritionists do a great job of writing out, you know, how to go shopping, what to buy. You know, if you're buying chicken breast, they're using chicken in three different days. You know, it's really nice, easy, and simple because it, we got to make it simple. Otherwise, people won't use it. So yeah. that'd be not complicated. And that's what I liked about it was, okay, this is the whole deal where you kind of go through, you understand why this is the, potentially the case by going through the principles and, and thinking through it, because it actually makes sense. Uh, and then you get in to say, okay, what about me? And it's, the quizzes are there. It's just, it's all right here in the book. And then the meal plans are there for you to go ahead and, and give this a shot. Uh, and then now you know, okay, well, I, I need to be more of a, a FODMAP style eater because that's what's going to hurt my back. And I might find myself you know, at a picnic and there's some beans and I go ahead and eat them and I notice I start feeling a little achy the next day. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, I know my answer. I shouldn't have had those beans. Exactly. That, and, and that's what we want, right? This is a, uh, a self-discovery journey and it's really important. So in, in the back part of the book, we have a complete symptom journal and we want to have the person track their pain levels, track their meals, track their hunger levels, and really be able to help use that information so that they can get the feedback so they can figure out what they can get away with and what they can't, what they should be eating, what they shouldn't, and what the price they pay is if they go wildly off the diet, what's going to happen to them. And th- yeah. that all works for us. Yeah. And that's what I liked about it was it's, it's very simple. You know, whenever we start thinking about surgery or we're going into the doctor over and over again, and they're really just not giving us any answers and, the, you know, the pain pills are not going to be the answer for the long term. I think we all know that intrinsically. So we've got to try to find an answer that works and it might be stress. It might be a strain. Uh, you know, when I hurt my back, I knew exactly the moment I heard it. And so for me, I knew what it was, but same thing. I know when I'm going to go tailgating, I'm probably going to get some tendonitis because that's just what ends up happening. So I think we can know that there's an opportunity here for us to make some, in many cases, just subtle changes to our food and feel a lot better for it. Yeah. I mean, I can't emphasize enough my frustration of seeing day in and day out with my patients 
how they're suffering and suffering. And, you know, I had a patient this past week, he'd been to eight different doctors. Uh, he could barely sit down his life and his quality of life. He was losing his entire quality of life. And it was because of his diet. We took an x-ray and we saw immediately on the x-ray, there was gas all over his digestive system. We pointed to the gas and said, there's your problem. And uh, in the book, we have pictures of x-rays of what an, a normal x-ray should look like and one that has a lot of digestive upset. And within, again, within 10 days to two weeks, he changed his diet and he got his life back. And it's the simplest thing. So I can't urge your listeners enough to try it. I know it, it sounds crazy. No one is discussing the link between back pain and your diet. But why can't you change it? Why can't you just try it for two weeks and see what happens? And I completely agree with you there. It's 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 a lot cheaper than the medication. Uh, it's it's a lot uh, safer and easier on you than the surgery. And it's just frustrating to go to doctor, 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 and not get an answer uh, for something that might just be uh, self-inflicted, which is some of our food choices. So, uh, Dr. Sinnott, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. If someone wanted to get in touch with you, uh, learn more about what you're doing at your practice, or learn more sure. about this book, where would you like for me to send them? Uh, well, uh, my website is drsinnott.com. It's Dr. S-I-N-E-T-T dot com. Um, the, all of my books are on Amazon, and uh, my back pain relieving product, Backbridge, is at backbridge.com, or it, it's all available on my website as well. Cool. Well, this is episode 340. So you can go to 40 plus fitness podcast.com forward slash 340. I'll have a link to Dr. Sinnott's site and a link where you can pre order the book on Amazon. So again, Dr. Sinnott, thank you so much for being a part of 40 plus fitness. Uh, I truly appreciate it, really. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed today's episode, would you please take just one moment and leave us a rating and review on the application that you're listening to this podcast right now? I'd really appreciate it, and it does help other people find the podcast uh, because it tells the people that are, that are hosting these podcast episodes out there on their apps uh, that you're interested, uh, and they know that other people like you might be interested. So please do that. Uh, if you can't figure out how to do that on your app, you can email me directly, and I'll try to figure it out for you. Or you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash review. Review, uh, and that'll take you to the iTunes where you can launch that and leave a review there. So really appreciate the ratings and reviews. It does help the podcast. It helps me. So thank you very much for that. And also, I'd really like to continue this conversation uh, a little bit further. So uh, if you haven't already, why don't you go ahead and join our Facebook group? You can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group, and that'll take you to our Facebook group where you can request entry. It's a really cool group of people, uh, like-minded, you know, all in our 40s, all trying to get Get healthy and fit. Uh, really love to have you out there and have you a part of that conversation. So go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Daniel Siegel and discuss his book, Aware, The Science and Practice of Presence, The Groundbreaking Meditation Practice. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.